So I watched DJ Snake DJ in .25x speed and I found 5 cool DJ techniques that he does that you may or may not have noticed before. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what those 5 things are and explain to you guys how you can do those tricks yourself. Let's start with 2 technical DJ tricks DJ Snake does when he performs. The first one involves using loops and the volume fader. So this is a pretty creative and technical DJ trick that may look complicated at first but is actually quite simple to do. What it involves are three things, loop preparation, volume cutting, and loop releasing. So the first thing you want to do is find a song that has a monotone breakdown. Once you find that song, locate a section in it where you want your trick to finish. So we want the trick to finish here. Let's make a 4 beat loop right before you reach this section. If you guys want your loop to always loop when you play your song on Recordbox DJ, press this button over here. And on Serato DJ, Press this button over here before playing your track. Now we are ready to try this routine. So with our loop set to active, let's play our song. Once we get close to the loop, activate an echo effect on it. Then, when you reach the loop, get musical and start cutting the loop with your volume fader. Once you're done cutting the loop, simply deactivate the loop and echo effect to let your song progress further. Can you feel me? The second trick involves using the echo effect to hype up his tracks. <laughs> That echo sound is a signature echo effect used by a lot of EDM DJs like Martin Garrix. But the thing about this echo effect accent trick is that it can only be properly done on DJ equipment with a time knob like the XTJXZ, DJM series, and other high-end mixers. Don't worry though, in this explanation, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this echo effect accent trick on DJ equipment with and without a time knob. So let's begin on how to do this trick on the controller without a time knob like this DDJ400. Keep in mind though that this trick isn't going to sound perfect. It will just sort of simulate the effect. So the first thing you want to do is set your echo effect to 1 over 16. Then set your effect BPM setting from auto to tap. Setting your effect BPM setting to tap will enable you to manually input your desired effect BPM. Next. Before you play your song, trigger the tap button as fast as you can with the goal to reach a BPM higher than 500 on your effect BPM counter. Then with your track playing, activate your echo effect and bring the level slash depth knob to the right side to hear that signature echo effect accent. Now for you guys who are lucky enough to have DJ equipment with time knobs, the procedure is a lot simpler. 
With your echo effect set to 1 over 16, simply turn your time knob all the way to the right side till you see the MS knob indicate 1. DJ Snake is known for doing hyped up, energetic, and exciting DJ sets. And the easiest way to make your mix exciting is to have your next song's build up section begin right after your current song's chorus ends. Doing this allows you to keep the momentum and energy of the mix up. And there are two things you need to do to ensure you perfect this build up transition. On your next song, locate its build up section. Once you find it, beat jump backwards by 32 beats and mark that section. This will be the section where we'll cue our next track in when the current song is playing. Next on the current song or the song we'll be mixing from, locate the section where its chorus ends. Once you find it, beat jump backwards by 32 beats and mark that section. This section will be our visual cue to mix our next track in. Once you understand this form of song preparation, you can take your mixes up another level by doing chorus to chorus transitions. DJ Snake's next trick may be controversial for some DJs, so before I offend you, let me just let you know that if you guys want to ensure that you nail all these DJ tricks live in your DJ sets, you guys gotta check out Young Guru's online class on how to DJ from setup to sound check. There he teaches you a bunch of things, like how to set up your equipment, how to make sure everything sounds right, and just how to have an overall better and smoother time DJing live. So if you want to check out that DJing Live Masterclass and a whole lot more, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down below will get 30% off on annual premium membership on Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. So even if you already had a free trial of Skillshare, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. Now Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With over 20,000 classes in graphic design, music production, songwriting, and more, which are all fueled by passionate creatives like myself, you're pretty much set for life if you want to learn anything new, efficiently, effectively, and economically. Because an annual subscription on Skillshare just costs under $10 a month. So make 2021 a year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. Anyway, let's now move on to DJ Snake's controversial DJ technique. So in order to transition to different genres and BPM ranges, DJ Snake uses transition tracks. Transition tracks are tracks made by DJs for the purpose of transitioning between huge BPM differences like 100 to 120, 120 to 80, etc. Using them though is a bit controversial because these transition tracks are already pre-made transitions. I for one though use these tracks all the time because they ensure smooth and clean jumps to different genres and BPMs. The thing though with these transition tracks is that they're mostly available from DJ record pools like BPM Supreme. So if you want to get access to a bunch of them and a whole lot more, use coupon code DJ Carlo for a huge discount when you sign up on their site. Anyway, let's now move on to how DJ Snake accents his tracks when he's not busy abusing the echo effect. So another way he accents his tracks is by using a reverb effect. The reverb effect leaves a nice echo tail after you deactivate it, and using it is a great way to subtly hype up a buildup. But if you want the audience to really hear that you're hyping up your buildup, try using a filter effect. Yeah. 
A lot of DJs like Skrillex, Hardwell, and Martin Garrix use this accenting technique all the time. And that's it. If you made it this far in this video, let me know who you are by commenting down below a DJ who style you guys want me to break down next and also include a clover emoji in your comment. And with that said, thank you so much for watching everyone and I will see you all in the next one.